So let's get going with our absolute value note. So let's find where we left off. And I'll be asking, we made some great conclusions from yesterday's work. Let's build on it. So the first important characteristic we're going to talk about is the A value. The A value affects the steepness. It was an E or an A? Affects. Effects? Affects. Like, like um, special effects in a video would be with an E versus affect, like something affects something else. That's why I don't teach English. The A value affects, with an A, the steepness of the graph. We can use words like pull and stretch. Now, some characteristics associated with A. If A, the absolute value of A is between 0 and 1, the graph will be more wide. If the absolute value of A is greater than 1, more narrow. A second piece of information we get from A. Yes. So be careful. The, that was a great question. The question was, what, is if it, what if it's less than zero? Notice how we're taking the absolute value of it. So we're just looking at the numerical value, no positive or negative, just the number. Okay? Now, now we're going to talk about the effect of a positive or negative A. Tells us. If the graph will open up or down. If A is greater than zero, guess what happens? Good. Opens up. And that's what we mean by opens up. If A is less than zero, opens down. <clears throat> Good question. If A equals zero, would I have an absolute value graph? So check it out. The question was, what happens if A equals zero? So the general form is Y equals A times X minus H plus K. If A is zero, what happens to this entire absolute value piece? This entire value would be zero. So no good. I would no longer have absolute value. Great question. Okay, let's talk about the vertex. What were the values for the vertex again? Vertex. H comma K.
vertex. From the vertex, we get a lot of information. The first piece of information we're going to talk about is axis of symmetry. And when we start graphing, we'll talk more about axis of symmetry. But for right now, we're just going to put it in our notes. The, axis, the equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals h. And this is a vertical invisible line through the vertex. Yes, AOS is an abbreviation we'll use for axis of symmetry. The vertical invisible lines. So if we were to sketch a graph just so we can have a visual, my axis of symmetry would be this invisible vertical line that goes directly through the vertex. And the equation of that invisible line would be x equals whatever the h value of the vertex is. That was piece one. This is the most important piece of information we get from H and K. H and K will shift the parent function away from the origin. H and K will shift the parent function away from the origin. H causes a horizontal shift. What do we mean by horizontal? What directions is that? Left and right. If you ever are not sure, think horizontal, horizon, like the horizon of the sky is this way. So let's put that in parentheses. Moves the graph left or right. So if H causes a horizontal shift, guess what K does? Good job. K causes a vertical shift. Moves the graph. Which ways? Possibly. Good. Domain. <clears throat> Let's talk domain first. My only two possibilities are, are opening up or opening down. No matter what I do, when I come in from the left and right, what's my domain always going to be? So all real numbers, if you choose to write negative infinity to infinity, that's good too. But no matter what, no matter what kind of absolute, gra absolute value graph we have, it's always going to be all real numbers. Can we say that about the range as well? No. Good. We cannot. So let's talk a little bit about the range. 
range is restricted. by the k value. So let's draw our two pictures again. Give me an ordered pair for this point. Just give me a vertex point. Two, what was it? Two, one? And then I'll use this one. We'll use 6 because we didn't use 6. We'll give me an, a y value. So if I know my vertex, I actually already know my range. Here's my k value. So what would the range be for this first graph? This first graph? 1 comma, infinity. What's my range for my second graph? Negative infinity, 2, negative 3. So that y value will always be either the smallest possible y value if it opens up, or the largest possible y value if it opens down. In both cases, it's my restriction on range. So let's practice a little bit. Example. There's so much we can say about this now. Let's start talking about A. What is A? A equals negative 4. What can you tell me about this graph because you know A is negative 4? Opens, which way? Opens down. Why is it open down? Because it's a negative A. Good. What else do we know? Look at your notes. What do we know? Well, still from A. Just from A. We'll get to the vertex in a second. Is it wide or is it narrow? Well, to figure this out, so I'm hearing wide and narrow, what do I have to take? We're going to take the absolute value of negative 4. What is the absolute value of negative 4? 4. Okay, so now we know the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. How does that help me? So 4 is greater than 1, which means the graph is... Wide or narrow? Look at your notes. Narrow. So now I know I have a graph that opens down and is more narrow. Now let's talk vertex. What's my vertex? Try again. Negative 5. Watch out for that built-in negative. Right? So x minus h plus k? Yes? Let me write vertex. Okay, there are many, many things we get from the vertex. Tell me. 
Tell me one. Let's start with that. Axis of symmetry. What's the axis of symmetry going to be? X equals negative 5. So if we were to draw an invisible, our invisible dotted line through the vertex, vertical line, the equation of that invisible line is X equals negative 5. Great. What else can I say? Let's talk shift. Shift. So let's first talk about H. What's H? Negative 5. So what shift is that? Shift left 5. And what's K? That is a shift up 11. Very good. So remember, H is always left or right. K is always up or down. So now we can label negative 5, 11 as our vertex. Let's talk domain and range. Domain. Range. Very good. Negative infinity, comma, 11. Okay, so let's work on some actual graphs now. With this set of notes, for time, even though this says investigation, we're going to work on it together. Michael, there's three in here for your row. There's one here for you. Okay, so in each set, in each question, there are three graphs. So, for example, for question one, we'll be looking at graphs A, B, and C. So, the first question says, What does the value of A? have in common for all three graphs. Now, it's interesting because we don't have an equation, right? But from what the graph looks like, I should be able to say something about A for all three graphs. What do we think? A is positive. Why is A positive? How do we know that? Good. Take a moment, please, and identify the vertex of each graph. So, for example, the vertex for graph A will go right here, graph B, graph C. What are we getting for the vertex of graph A? 4, 1. B? C? What do the vertices? Vertices is the plural for vertex. 
So what do the vertices of all of the graphs have in common? We, we do have ordered pairs across the board here, but let's look at the characteristics. Let's see if we can make a generalization about H. Does H have anything in common? Negative 6 is greater than 1? No. So I have a positive, a negative, a positive. Hmm. We're now looking at A, right? That's, that's H. How about the how about the k values? So since I have positive k values across the board, what kind of shift has happened to all three graphs? Up. All three graphs have been shifted up. How many x-intercepts does each graph have? How many x-intercepts does this one have? Zero. How about graph B? Zero. Graph C? X-intercepts. X? Zero. So let's actually just reason on this. If the graph has been shifted up and it opens up, Will you ever have any x-intercepts? No. Let me say that again. If your graph has been shifted up and it opens up, will there ever be an x-intercept? No. Very good. So let's use this same investigative process on number two. Take a second. What does the value of A have in common for all of these three graphs? Negative A. How do you know that? Good. All three graphs. Open down. Vertex for graph D. Let's do DEF. I'll give you a minute on your own. Get those ordered pairs. Graph D, the vertex. Negative 3. <coughs> Negative 5. Graph E. 1, negative 3. Graph F. Negative 2, negative 1. What do the vertices of all three graphs have in common? Negative K. How do you know that? Well, from the ordered pairs, obviously. Sorry. Not the question I meant to ask. What effect has negative K had on all three graphs? All three graphs shifted down. Let's talk x-intercepts again. How many x-intercepts does graph D have? None. Graph B? None. And graph F? Zero again. So let's reason on this. If it has shifted down and opens down, will you ever have an x-intercept? No. Yes. Question. No, no, tell me. You got it? Okay. So there's a common thread here. If it's shifted up and opens up, it'll never cross the x-axis. If it's shifted down and opens down, it's never going to cross the x-axis. Good question. The question was, how, what do I mean by shifted up or down? Remember that our parent function, let's start up here. My parent function, the vertex is at 0, 0. So this entire graph has been shifted up 4. There is a horizontal shift, but we're not talking about horizontal right now. So this graph has been shifted up 4. This graph has been shifted up 6. This one has been shifted up 1. From, yes, from that initial 0k value. 
Now, on these ones, no different. My original parent function would be what I drew, but just for the sake of reasoning here, let's say I have a negative A value, but I'm still at zero, zero, right? This has been shifted down, shifted down, shifted down. And here, it's only been shifted down by one. It might as well be a million, right? Yeah. You're off the x-axis and you're opening down. No x-intercepts. Great question. Let's look at graph uh, number three on the back. For the following absolute value graphs shown, answer the questions that follow. Identify the vertex of each graph. Who's got the vertex for G? H? I. What do the vertices of all of these graphs have in common? Zero is the the y value, k value, same. Yes. Yes. K equals zero. What effect does this have on the vertex? Where is the vertex located in all three graphs? So what has not happened? What is there none of? Yeah, vertex on the x-axis. No vertical shift. How many x-intercepts do, do all three of these graphs have? So if k equals zero, that vertex will always be locked somewhere on the x-axis, meaning I have one x-intercept. Explain why in these cases the value of a does not affect the number of solutions. We kind of just talked about it. A affects whether the graph opens how? Up or down. But has there been a shift off of the x-axis? No. no. So you're still sitting on the x-axis and opening up. So no matter what, So no matter what A is, still no vertical shift. Very good. Now the challenge for you is in number four to start experimenting with your own graphs. So number four says draw three absolute value graphs that would have two x-intercepts. Now a couple minutes ago, Adesola asked a good question. Did anybody hear what she had asked? Yeah. What did she say? The question was, can the graph shift up and open down? That might be a good place to start for one of them. So let's let's explore what she's saying. Give me an ordered pair in either in either of these two quadrants. Five, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So we are saying the vertex is going to be five, three. What would you like the A value to be? So we'll talk more about sketching in a, in a couple days, but we use that A value to count for the rays. So from this point, down to right one, down to right one, down to right one. To get the other ray, instead of going down to right one, I'll go down to left one. So this is what she meant by K 
Can the graph be shifted up but open down? Do I have two x-intercepts? Yes, I do. So now can you come up with another one? You could. Possible. Anything is possible. Sure. Let's shift down and open up. Give me the vertex that you're using. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Negative four, negative three. And let's work with a fraction A value. Give me a fraction. One half. So that'll be up one, right two, up one, right two, up one, right two. And instead of going up one, right, I'll go up one, left to get the other way. Notice how much wider this graph is. Very good. How many x-intercepts does this graph have? Two again. <clears throat> So graph L will be for you to work on, and can you make a generalization on the, the effect of A, H, and K on the number of x-intercepts? Discussing x-intercepts is where, where class will start again with the notes tomorrow. I would like you to have a couple minutes to get started on tonight's homework. I will possibly not be here in the morning. Um, I'm on a committee in the district that we're going to go visit um, other schools in the district. I don't know where actually East Hartford High is the first school on the list, so it's kind of nice because I don't have to go anywhere. Um, but what time those, it's called a walkthrough. What time those walkthroughs start, I'm not sure. So if I find out that I'm not going to be here for A, I am actually going to do a video for class tomorrow. So the sub will, all the sub will need to do is just click play and then we'll have class, like an online class for that day. Does that make sense? So no worries if I'm not here. We will still have class, just like if I was here. <laughs> yep. Last night? Yeah. I, I just checked it. Oh, that... That is the PSWISE 2.0 video that I want you to go online and watch. Yes. So see how this, this one it doesn't even have a back and it's just identifying characteristics? I think most people might even be able to finish most of this before they leave today. Okay? Let's focus. Focus, focus. Focus. Use your notes. I'll be around to help. Good job today.